thank you all for having me. Uh, but honestly, I'd like, before we go too far, to really, honestly, I want to thank all the audience for being here. Uh, it's kind of a packed house. It's pretty intense. Um, and I'd like to thank the organizers for actually agreeing to have me on. Uh, for me, it's really, it's, it's a true honor to be up here. It's a true, it's, it's a big event for me, a big thing. Up until recently, I didn't really start doing speeches or talks or many big events. Um, actually, most of the time, the last six years, I was really the guy that was behind the scenes. I was more behind the curtain, uh, just focused on the hard work, just focused on making sure the stage worked, that the show went on every night, that what needed to get done went, got done. And I, I didn't really worry about being on the stage, being a main character. I just focused on doing my job. And uh, recently, it's pretty funny because the curtain just kind of got pulled off the stage. And all of a sudden, there I am standing there in my little booth that I was behind the curtain, safe and sound. And now I'm on center stage and uh, one of the main characters in this show, and I have to just, I have to figure out how to deal with it. Um, but I apologize. I'm getting a little bit sappy. I sound like a superhero in the, uh, the, the sequel of a trilogy where he can't figure out what he wants to do and how to deal with that new superpower and, and how he wants to move forward. And he's like, oh, life's so hard. I'm like a superhero now. What do I do? And then we're all sitting there watching the screen. We're going, dude, you're a freaking superhero. Like, you can't be touched. Like, come on, deal with it. Get on with it. Um, but honestly, that's life, right? And... Uh, that's, that's probably the best description of life. You know, it's a long movie, trilogy, a series. It's, uh, it's the TV series that goes on forever, 12 seasons, whatever you want to call it. But it's a, it's a giant journey, honestly. Like, it constantly evolves, it constantly develops, it changes. The characters, your favorite character dies and gets pulled out of the movie. Um, new characters come in you absolutely hate. And it's always changing, constantly evolving. And Sometimes the, the backstage person has to go on the front of the stage. Um, that's, you know, probably perfect why I feel like that right now. This is kind of shifting into our, our, our second movie, our, our sequel to our life of what me and Katinka have been doing. And, uh, you know, the last, I guess you would say the last four years, the last five years were basically the first edition. We figured out who we were. We found our superpower. We figured out what we want to do, our journey and our process. And right now we're in the process of dealing with that identity crisis and trying to figure out what we want to do and continue moving forward. But, you know, we, we in that first period, that first movie, if you want to talk about it, we, you know, it's, it's pretty funny because we had to evolve. That's, that's what we had to do. We had to develop and, and, and grow from what we were. Because imagine, I was an inexperienced, never coached really, in my life, and I was going to the Olympic Games with my best friend, the girl I'm madly in love with and, and the one I was spend the rest of my life with, and I'm going there with her at her peak, what everyone was saying was her peak, and she's gonna try and perform, and she's gonna try and, after waiting for four years, now I've watched these four years evolve, and we're going to try to, I'm trying to go there to help her not have anything bad happen. And we're gonna try and make sure she shows her best cards and she goes there and doesn't choke. And what happens? <laughs> well, it's sports, that happens. <laughs> she comes in fourth. She deals with the, probably the most dramatic, worst experience an athlete probably gonna deal with. You do all that work, you get to the very edge of it, and the last second you screw something up and you come in just close enough that you get nothing. But you still get absolutely nothing, but you're just there, the closest you can get. And honestly, it was a tough, tough situation. And after that, all of a sudden, she's saying, hey, Shane, can you lead the uh, team of people that's gonna be around me to make a chase at the Rio Olympic Games? I'm going, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, sure, <laughs> love to. <laughs> uh, half, a, half a degree in, in, graduate, in graduate school for sports psychology. Plenty of degrees in, in college, but no actual experience. No actual on-hand experience. And that was the moment where the two of us as a, as, as a team, that was our team, it was two of us. It didn't really grow outside of that. I, I failed to add to that team essentially. But um, it was the two of us and we sat there and we said, okay, so we can either stand here and we can focus on what happened in the past. Now we can focus on the fact that she was there and what you can argue one way or the other, but essentially she choked in sports. She got there, she had her prime, everything was in line for it to happen and it didn't. 
And you can focus on that well. That shows that you're never going to be able to do it. It shows your character. You haven't performed at that level. You haven't performed at that level for a long time. Or you're going to be 27 in the next one, so it's not going to work. Age, people's history show that you can't perform at that level. So we could have really gotten stuck in all those past and all of that different equations that show it's not going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, so why would it happen? Or we could have sat there on the verge of something, and we could have said, okay, so it's 2012. We're going to start training towards uh, 2016. That's four years from now. And we could have obsessed every waking day over the idea that in Rio de Janeiro on August, I don't know what it was, August 6th, we're going to try and swim the 400 IM one more time. And that day we have to be perfect. And we could have obsessed over that one day and then all of a sudden that day comes up and oh my God, it's not the future anymore. And oh my God, it's here. And we could have been so obsessed with it when it actually came, we weren't ready. And we could have constantly been obsessed with that and we never would have done anything in the middle. But what we actually decided to do was we said, okay, let's sit down. Screw the future. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, it's Olympic Games. And yeah, that was what we were working towards. That was our peak. That's what we wanted to accomplish. That was where we were going to decide the journey was made it or not. But let's forget it altogether. Let's just completely ignore it because for right now, we need to get stuck in the present. And we need to get stuck in what we were doing. We wanted to be in the moment, every step of the way, and enjoy the ride because neither of us enjoyed the four years before the Olympic Games in London. It was like a whirlwind of things. We had Shanghai that wasn't the performance we wanted. We had, we had Rome where she actually won the world title, and we were like, okay, on to the next. Let's go, let's go. And we never enjoyed the journey of what we did. So when we started going towards 2016, we said, you know what? It's all about the present. It's all about what we're doing right this second in this moment and how we're going to do it. And we took that to the far extreme. We took that to every day, every practice. We said, it doesn't matter, Rio. It matters this workout. We're going to win the Olympic gold right here. We're going to train this set. We're going to win the Olympic gold in this set, in this workout, in this bench press. We're going to win the Olympic games. In this 50 freestyle, in this set of 10 50 freestyles, we're going to win the Olympic gold. And we kept going down to the simple fact that we agreed on one thing. We were going to focus and trust in the idea that the hard work that we were putting in would actually pay off at some point at some time. Even if we didn't like when that was, we were trusting the idea that it would come out and it would be there for us. We knew that the hard work we put in before London was there because she turned around and she won the World Cup. We could see hints and proof that it was there, but it was so hard to see in sports because you only focus on the, the victories or the, or the defeats. We don't focus on, we get distracted by those big moments that we lose track of the quality and the, the necessity of each individual workout and what that means for everyone. And then we figured, well, why would we do all that work for one race? Let's race in Tokyo. Let's race in Singapore. Let's race in China. Let's race in, we wanted to go everywhere we could go. There was a race. We wanted to race everyone on the planet who was considered good, and we wanted to race the ones that weren't considered good. We wanted to race everyone. So we went to, when we did get to that future point that we were ignoring, we'd know exactly what it was. It wasn't the future. It wasn't surprising anymore. It was the present, and we were constantly in the present. Do you want to, it's, it's easy for me to say this because I know swimming. And it's kind of, I understand it might be kind of difficult to say, okay, great, 10 50 freestyles. You're going to win the Olympic Games in a 50 freestyle. Let me explain it in a different way. Let me go back to my movie reference. Because basically, you turn around and you say, okay, we all know movies. And I'm pretty sure you're not thinking the same example I am, but I'm going to think about the idea of making a movie, making an actual movie you see in the cinema come on screen. Now, we all know all the pieces that go into it. We've all heard of all the job titles, we've heard of all the different things. Now, you have a lot of pieces that can be broken down in that. Now, for example, let's talk about the future first. No one starts making a movie to have it suck. I, I don't think anyone does. I mean, I would be very surprised if someone raised their hand and said, I did. Um, we all set out to break a blockbuster opening weekend record. We all set out to have it be a piece of cinematic history. Each movie, you know, we want to win an Oscar or, or, you know, whatever awards you could possibly win. The director wants to put in his resume as the guy who directed this or wrote it or whatever it is. And each actor is trying to make his career with it. There's a lot of things going on in that distant, far future that this cinema, cinematic piece of history is supposed to make. Simple movie. When we're supposed to make all this 
history and greatness. And I mean, you can get really out of control if you start thinking of it that way. And then if you go backwards on the other side, you have a lot of past. You have the past and the history and the, all the stuff that goes into the, the actors, their positives, their negatives, their, their reputations, their abilities. You have the director and what his history is, what his past is. You have the, the likelihood of what's going on with all of the production house. You have their reputation. You have whether they'll green light things, that they move fast, that they run out of money. There's a lot of past that you can start looking at and get stuck. Well, this, this studio house always runs out of money. They over under budget it. They're never going to come forward. And all these things are going to get you stuck before you even get started. And the movie's never going to get off the ground. And there's a lot of movies that that happens to. A lot of them. And a lot of them that are very successful when they finally do go out. But let's think about it in the middle. There's a million jobs that go into making a movie. A million of them. There's so many jobs. You got costume creator, you got directors, you got actors. Those are the base ones. You got the editors, you got the screenwriters, you got the adjusters, you got the assistants that actually take care of stuff that we don't even think about on the floor. I mean, these are people who are running, they're, they're gophers. They run and go get stuff and bring it back so someone can actually focus on doing their job for that time frame. These people who are unappreciated, unthought of, you don't put them, they, that screen comes by and we only wait for the, the, the credits to roll just so we can see the extra scene at the end. Yeah, that's all the people that we don't think about. That's a long list we can't wait to be over with. Those are all the jobs and all the things that took place to make that movie happen. Now, that's the part where every single person worked on something, their individual piece of what they were doing. And each job didn't make that movie, but all those jobs put together did make that movie. So every time that gopher or that assistant went to go get a cup of coffee for the director, that actually made a difference. That was hard work paying off. We just don't think about it. We're like, oh, it's a cup of coffee. Who cares? Well, the director cared. And the movie cared because the director was focused. And it was able to help and make a bigger impact on what the overall picture was. So it does, really make a ma- it does really make a giant difference in what's going on. It's a matter of saying, okay, let's focus on all the little tasks we've got to do. Let's focus on all the little pieces, all those hard work job titles we have to do, all those things that we don't like to do but we have to do. Let's focus on being in the present because the minute that assistant starts thinking, well, am I going to win an Oscar? No. <laughs> no, you're not going to get any credit for that. But then we start losing track, and then the movie starts taking detours. And then you have actors who have problems with other actors because they want to vie for who's going to get the bigger, the bigger recognition for this movie. And then they clash, and then it shows on the screen, and then the movie's not very good. And this doesn't work. So what happens is you need each person to click the way, you need all these people to click and focus on the same present focus, the hard work paying off right there and then. And it goes to everything. It, this is a giant, this is a giant overarching concept. A movie is huge, but it, it works for everything. You want to learn a language? Yeah, you understand you need to learn at least a word. And then you pick up another word, and you pick up another word. And then you can start to, once you have enough vocabulary, you can start putting together grammar. But you can't put grammar together if you don't know at least a small portion of the vocabulary. And if you want to learn multiple languages and be a language expert, we better learn one first and master your mother tongue first, and then you can pick up a secondary language and so forth. But it's step by step. And it's being, in the, it's being in the moment and in the process, taking things one by one in which we can actually accomplish major, giant things. Right now, after the Rio Olympics, she, she was fantastic. Three golds and a silver. It was unbelievable. It was one of the greatest things we've ever been accomplished, ever been part of, and yet accomplished. And really, we didn't expect it. We knew we were going there and we we're going to focus on one race at a time. We, came, we went to the Olympic Games to focus on a 400 individual medley. They won one race. That's it. Because that's all we could do. There was a 200 backstroke and a 200 IM and there's a bunch of other medals that she won. Well, those, we focused on them when they came up. We got so obsessed with this, so broken into, the, absorbed by this aspect of being in the presence that we didn't even think about the 200 IM or that world record, or the 200 backstroke, or who was going to race it, or the 100 backstroke. None of it, none of it mattered. It only mattered that 400 IM for us. And afterwards, we started saying, okay, so this is a repeatable process. 
if the movie industry can do it, and we can do it with languages, and we can do it with this, and it worked for sports, we're going to help other athletes do it. And now we're trying to instill that philosophy on the other athletes in our Iron Aquatics program. The other pros that have come to train alongside Katinka are now doing that philosophy. Many of them are focused on the Tokyo Olympics, but they're focused right now on this workout they had this morning and then focused on the one they'll have this afternoon. And that's it. They're not worried about how that impacts immediately, what that impacts there. They're focused on what the value of that, the small victory that's inside that focal point and that task they have to accomplish. We've also tried to repeat it in pretty much everything else we've done. And we're trying to repeat it in a way that actually brings it to other people. We're trying to instill that in pretty much every part of our company that we've created and every iron product and every thing we're creating is based around that. We're trying to instill and show how to do that with the books, with the comic books, with the media production. We're trying to create everything on our side is made using that philosophy and that from our employees. Every employee is trying to use that philosophy to break things down and stay in the present and work together towards the what has to get done today to put together for tomorrow. And yet at the same time, we're trying to make sure that the community we build around those and around that philosophy and the community we try to build with the Iron Nation are people who understand that philosophy as well and that they can use that to inspire others, inspire themselves, and inspire, and in turn, they've inspired us to do more. So we're trying to create that as a whole to put together. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's up to you guys. It depends on whether you can focus on what you have to do today, such as being here, listening, taking notes, finding that one piece of nugget of information that might actually matter, taking that round, writing it on a note, and then using that to find a way to instill into, into tomorrow. And for us to continue today, giving this speech, trying to learn from this speech, whether it was good, bad, how I can adapt from it, how I can grow from it, helping the kids tomorrow at practice and step by step. So it really comes down to what you want to do, how you want to do it, and trying to find a way that, yes, you have to have the big goal. There has to be something that gets you up in the morning. There has to be something that you shoot for and that you dream of. But there has to be a way to block it out and say, okay, to do that, I have to do this. And there has to be a balance in what you're doing. You can't be stuck in your, pra your past. The past has made you who you are. It is the things that make up your character, that make up who you are as a person. And they are why you're in the present. But that presence where we are, and that presence what we have to do. So we have our dreams, we have who we are, so we don't have any choice but to focus on what we're doing in the moment to keep accomplishing the next moment and the next step and the next step. I always tell Katinka, I said, I don't care what we do today as long as we take a baby step in the right direction. It has to be that because I can't promise you anything else than one baby step today. Once we take that one baby step, we can take another. But I tell her, I say, it's like inertia. Once it starts, we just can try and keep rolling. We take one baby step, and the next one might be a little bit easier, and the next one's a little bit easier, and eventually we start running. But I can't promise that. I can only promise the first baby step. But that's that, and uh, good luck with that. I hope you guys enjoy it, and then, uh, I really appreciate you guys having me on here. Thank you.